Hello everybody, the shooting season is all but upon us again and I've put two short films together for you. One is about kit and equipment that you may require and the other is a reminder of the excitement to come in the field. Hello everybody, we're uh, going to go through uh, some equipment uh, that's needed uh, for the, uh, the game season that's just nearly upon us. We're only a couple of months off it now. The reason I'm doing it just on the front of our Partridge film is on this particular film we've got a few of our American visitors um, that came to shoot Partridge at Titwater last year and um, it, the emphasis is on showing our overseas uh, visiting guns what they need to do when they want to come and shoot in the UK and I'll just get this little piece of paper here. And this is information that's provided by the police forces in, in, the, uh, in the UK. This one in particular is North Yorkshire's uh, requirements. Uh, all the info that you need. Uh, this is non-European uh, visitors, uh, visiting gun re re requirements. So, a must if you're visiting the UK. Game and Wildlife Conservancy Trust, that's a good uh, website to visit. Uh, they'll give you information on estates. Um, and it's, uh, it's a really good website because it's one of our scientific bodies. And if you, if you need to know anything about the flora and fauna of the UK, then it's a good site to visit. And one of our uh, largest bodies, of course, is Basque, which caters for every type of uh, country uh, sport and uh, you know what really goes off in the countryside. This covers hunting, parties, pheasant shooting, grouse shooting, legalities, and it's a really good uh, site to visit if there's anything that you need to know. And then. Uh, a really, really good site for uh, to if you want to book any shooting. On there will be pages and pages of uh, estates who are offering shooting, and uh, they actually have their own uh, insurance set up that you can book online if you wish to have two or three days insured that can cater for that. It about covers everything that goes off in a day shooting or that can happen in in a day shooting. So it's a really good uh, site to visit, guns on pegs. Now we'll go through the bit of equipment uh, that I consider is not a necessity, but it's a requirement to enjoy a day out. There's a lot of traditional uh, attire in, uh, in, in the UK. Um, people like to dress very nice when they're shooting. It's gone on for over a hundred years and uh, it's it's not about uh, snobs or anything like that. It's We just like to dress on dress for the occasion. And uh, there's nothing looks smarter than a, a, a good team of guns going out all dressed for the occasion. We'll just have a look at this equipment now and uh, uh, we'll go to the, the side by side first of all, which is the more traditional weapon of choice. It's not as popular as it used to be. Um, a lot of it's gone on to the over and under uh, guns now. But tradition again, there's a lot, a lot of followers of side-by-side -side shooting. It's still a capable weapon for, uh, for high pheasant shooting or uh, high partridge shooting. It's just what the individual, you know, wants to shoot. You know, whether it's comfortable with the side-by-side -side or an over-and-under. But still a place in the countryside and certainly um, a massive place in the shooting uh, fraternity for, for the outside by side Now we're going to go on to the, the over-and-under and just show you what, uh, what I use. And this particular pair is, uh, is a pair of Miracoo. But these are 30-inch, what they've just made me. These are just for the, for the grouse. 
and I've had them made in a, th a quarter, three quarter, which is ideal for the grouse more, because uh, you've got close, close and uh, shooting, and also you've got a bit of distance shooting. If you miss with the first barrel, if you've always got something that's further away than it to, than it was a moment ago, so for me that's that's a decent uh, choke setup, quarter, three quarter, fixed. As, I, as you see, these guns are brand new. I haven't even been out with these yet. I will have a bit of practice with them on, in a grouse butt on some clays when I get a chance. That's the cleaning kit for this type of, for the, for the 12 bore. You know, the, the brushes, uh, the, uh, the rag holders for the oily rags, all these stick together. Basic uh, gun care. And that's all you need just to make sure when you've been out on a foul day, make sure everything's clear of mud and muck before you put it away and it's ready for when you go out the next day. One thing that uh, a lot of people ask me is, you know, cartridges, uh, what I use and, you know, what uh, at certain times of the year. Uh, this year, I'll, obviously, I'll be starting on uh, two or three grouse days and I'll go to these babies here. Fantastic uh, auditing cartridge, uh, specifically designed for uh, long range grouse as well. You know, if you like to take them out well out front or behind, these are the things. But I've been using these on passes and pheasant and you know, they are doing a good job on them as well. Uh, as I go through the season, I'll go to the uh, 36 gram four black gold these are fibers, of course. Most of Yorkshire is on fiber wood now, so I'd advise anybody to get used to shooting fibers because that's uh, that's the future. First two or three months of the season, <clears throat> I'll be normally using 34, up to a 36 gram four or a five. Then late on its season, always a 36 gram four, or sometimes a 40 gram three. On the on the pheasants, and if you're a wild fowler, you like shooting geese or duck, then you know it goes to something a bit different, a bit heavier. And uh, these boys are these are 50 gram threes. Not everybody's cup of tea, but if you need to uh, get that extra fuel yard and make sure they're killed cleanly, then obviously. Use something that's going to do the job. One little bore that I like is the 28 bore. I've, I've had two or three goes with one. And uh, good little uh, gun and good to move about. If you were doing a lot of walking about or, uh, you know, you, you were doing a, a beater's day or something like that. Lovely gun to be walking around the woods with. Gun bags. This is one that I use in particular on a, if I'm on, having a, a day out on the moor, which usually you'll go to the moor, you might be you might be doing three or four drives and not coming back to a vehicle. So I'd just take a, a bag that that'll carry me hundred to hundred and fifty shells comfortably. We've got gun bags of varying quality and you know if you really want to push the boat out I've got this fantastic uh, ostrich leather. Sustainable ostrich because these are farmed ostrich, of course. Ostrich leather gun bags, um, and these are supplied by a good friend of mine, Peter Reedman, from uh, Fine Shooting Accessories. He's based in Kelso on the borders of Scotland. And then it's got a matching gun bag in in ostrich leather. And this is a this is a French designed gun bag. And the reason I like this gun bag and I do love it because it's dead easy to make it into a single gun single carrying gun bag you just clip that off there and put it on there and you've got a single gun bag then we've got actually Peter's had this made for me it's a really I've never seen a tougher leather gun bag in my life than this but this is this is what I call my bulk bag very good quality very strong, it lasts forever. But this will get you could get 250 cartridges in this, 
Now, if, if you're going on a really big day, sometimes you're not going back to the vehicle to fill up. So this on this occasion, you can stuff as many as you can in this and you're not worried about running out of shells through the day. And then the hard working gun bags is um, this double gun slip that I have. Um, you'll see more of these in the, in the UK. Um, they're, they're produced in the UK anyway, but one drawback, you've got a lot of contraptions to take off to make it into a single bag. I prefer now to, if I can afford it, to uh, have something a bit uh, a bit of better quality. I'll go on to the sticks first. I've got two sticks laid out here of uh, various lengths. That is the one I use on the mower. Yes, you'll sink you'll sink a foot in the mower. Plus, you're sometimes scrambling over little dikes and ditches, and that's ideal, you know, for spragging across a dike or something or a ditch. This one. What I use in general walking about, general shooting, pheasant passages, bit of rough ground. Very vital on uneven ground or slopey ground where you need to keep a footing. I've got here, I've got a, a shooting stick. If you want to rest in between drives or while you sat on, on a drive waiting for birds to come, that's ideal. Another essential for me with the UK weather is... Uh, there's a Wellington boat and these arches are a, they're a fantastic Wellington. Totally waterproof and very, very comfortable and very warm in the winter. I mean, people might laugh at this, but this is my preferred uh, wet weather gear now. This is the, the now famous skirt, wet weather, wet, uh, weather skirt. Very simple, very cheap, and uh, just a matter of wrapping it around the waist and meeting up with the with the gripper, and that's how easy it is. And this, everything just runs away from this. Uh, that totally, totally waterproof. Okay, some people might not uh, wearing things like this in the field, but for me, it's, it's more common sense than over trousers. I do all the way through the season, even through the ashes of winters. I'll just show a very light coat, one that's very movable. <clears throat> There's various on the market, but I like, most importantly, I like to be able to move when I'm shooting. But I had some Velcro fitted on the hood, and I, when, it's real, when it's like that, I always have a spare cap with some Velcro on. And that is a real good aid for keeping your, your hood on when it's wet and windy. It's it's first year I'm I'm going to have a look at uh, just wearing early season wearing trousers instead of uh, the plus twos or fours. So I'm going to try trousers this year. Nice jacket, waistcoat, and the trousers underneath. There you are. So you are you you, you turn it. It'll look really smart when it's on. And the, the old purdy tie there. Still still got a bit of a few feathers from last year <laughs> from last year stuck to it. And of course my game shooting hat. Either this one, my favourite. It's tight, it's nice and cool when it's uh, when it's uh, warm weather, but it's comfortable in cold weather as well. But it gives you a lovely peak for the rain and the sun. <clears throat> these these are okay, the the uh, the tip for the flat caps and everything, but they're not easy to keep on when it's a windy day, and uh, they look smart. It's tra they're very traditional as well, and as I say, I'm all for tradition, so I don't mind wearing that on on a nice day. <clears throat> if you if you're visiting North Yorkshire, um, obviously Elmsley is the the first port of call that everybody goes. A lot of overseas visitors. Go and stop in Elmsley. Carter's Country Wear is the place to go to get fitted. <clears throat> Fantastic outfitters. Very good um, uh, clothing shop to visit. He can also advise you on the way to go shooting <clears throat> the local estates. And uh, I know Jeremy does 
uh, do he does supply days as well. But he's, he's a fountain of knowledge for that area. Hopefully, it's that bit of information will help everybody that's that's come to visit the UK. And as I said, nearly everything's online now. There's plenty of uh, information to be had of where to shoot and where not to shoot. So, but first of all, is make sure that you're, you're fully legal you know, to be walking around this countryside with a gun. Thank you. I thought I would introduce the upcoming new season with a short film on partridge shooting at Water Priory. The team was made up of mostly visiting Americans and good friends. Unfortunately, it was very difficult to get most of the kill shots on film because of the extremely bright sunshine and blue skies. There was a stiff breeze that enabled decent flying conditions, but not good filming conditions. Please accept our humble apologies. The first drive at Water Priory, paradise. Paradise, because it is paradise. One of the best drives at water, when they do come off of the fantastic birds. It's not ideal weather conditions with the sun being so bright, but there's a bit of breeze up there, which will help them. I'm tipping that they'll, uh, they'll come off lovely off of you. singing and dancing, yeah. really. There's 20 minutes of shooting and every drive yeah. and there's, there's half an hour, three quarter of laughter till the next one. It's it brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right, second drive, this is Cat's Whiskers. Another uh, one of Waters uh, iBird uh, drives. And uh, Frank's just told me that the wind's absolutely bang on for them. As a visiting American, what do you think to it so far? Oh, this is as quality as I've ever seen. Yeah, I've shot in Scotland, and then of course I've shot at Ripley, but this is uh, extraordinary. Yeah. Yes, now and again you, you, you get the odd comment that uh, it seems a bit manicured, but no, no, it's, no. it's just tidy. Right? That's it's, what, it's easy on the feet. Yeah, <laughs> easy, open. easy on it's the feet. Shooting, isn't, yeah. it? isn't it? If, if God uh, were a shooting man, then this is where it come, I think, to play. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm in heavy industry in the States, and I asked Frank on the way over, walking up, did he bring in heavy grading equipment to, to do this? To do this. It looks yeah. so manicured. Yeah. You, would, you would look and you would think it's being yeah. designed. Brilliant. It's all yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it? Nice Everything, yeah. Is this actually yeah. that? Yeah, sure. Another hundred miles towards the coast, you've got valleys like this. All, and there's a lot of little shoots that even I've never been to. You know, the little family shoots that, yes, you yes. know, just as good as valleys that you never ever see. You know, just hidden little gems. This is the beauty about England. They've got such a diverse, you know, shooting. Uh, it's unbelievable shooting spots. Yes. Third drive, the famous Eddie Gallery. There's a minute's film of it where they flushed hundreds and hundreds of birds off it one day. It was a fantastic sight to see. It's a small day to day, but it just rains you in a little bit. And I think it actually helps you bloody concentrate more. So we'll see what they've got here, see what happens. Well, the grand finale, long grass. He knows exactly what he's doing to us, Frank. And he'll know where the birds are going to fly best. And uh, on its day, it's produced some fantastic birds, this little drive. Best we're on our lookout now. Yeah. 